TIG torches. We have lots and lots and lots of TIG torches. Now, you might want to take uh, the time that the intro plays to grab something to take some notes with because we are going to talk all about TIG torches <laughs> in this episode. All right, we got a lot of ground to cover on this one, but I first must absolutely give a huge shout out to CK Worldwide for generously providing the torches used in today's episode. Now, I do own a lot of welding machines, I do own a lot of torches, but I do not own this many torches or use this many different variants and variables for you guys to learn on. So, humongous thank you to CK Worldwide for uh, sending these out so we could use them and show you guys everything you need to know about TIG torches. Now, they are also an approved product, and I do use CK Worldwide here in the shop, which means I have links down below because they are recommended and you should definitely check that out. Once again, thank you to CK Worldwide. Second thing is, the topics that we cover in this episode, including the questions that we are answering, are from viewers. Viewers that subscribed and rung the bell for notifications. So when we put up the question, what do you guys want to know about TIG torches? We're answering all of their questions. So if you want to be in on the next episodes, future episodes, and the exclusive content, and the other stuff that we're planning for this season, you need to subscribe, you need to ring that bell, so that way you don't miss out, and you get your questions answered here. So, moving right along. Without a doubt, one of the most frustrating things to do regarding TIG torches is figuring out which one of them you need. I mean, we got different sizes, we got different attachments, we got different capabilities, we got different possibilities, different amperage ratings, different consumables, functions, forms, swivels, and heads, and flexes, and all this. It's just like total system overload, right? Because there's so many different options. Well, let's break it down to be as easy as it could possibly be. There are two types of torches in this world. We're not talking about the families or the sizes or anything like that. There are two types of torches, only two. They are the air and gas cooled and the water cooled. Here we go. Let's take a look at a couple of torches here. Now you notice they look pretty much identical, same size, shape, the whole works, until that is, we get the handles off of them, and you notice there's a big difference hiding underneath those handles. Now if we get in close here, we'll notice that one of them has only a single line going in, while the other actually has three lines going in. Now they are the same size and shape and all the rest of that good stuff, but those three lines make the world of difference as far as capability is concerned. One of these torches, only runs on argon or has argon pumping through to keep it cool. Now some will argue and stipulate that the argon doesn't actually cool the torch, but theoretically it's the only thing that pumps through and the welder does not work without it. So therefore it actually does have a slight cooling effect, though minimal, it does actually cool it as you go. Now they do heat up, you do have to take breaks and all the rest of that good stuff, but theoretically it would be a lot hotter if you didn't have argon at all. So technically it is how they are cooled. Now below we have our water cooler. Now the water cooler is a separate rig that pumps a coolant in and out of the torch, thus dissipating all of the heat and allowing you to grip it for a lot longer before it heats up. Now this is all different. How much you can actually run a torch and all the rest of that good stuff with and without a cooling unit, etc, etc. This is all variable. It's up to, say, how long you run your weld, how much amperage you have on it, etc, etc. So, either way you slice it, one of these accepts water or coolant, the other one only accepts argon. Now, the question is, which one of these do you need, or which one should you get, or how do you identify which one's which? There's a very, very simple answer to that. So you need to ask yourself, do I have a water-cooled rig? If the answer is yes, you need a water-cooled torch. If the answer is no, you need an air-cooled or a gas-cooled torch. Simple as it gets. Moving right along. All right, let's talk about the torch families. Now, the torch family is generally identified by a universal number system that most manufacturers use. That number dictates the size of the body, the general amperage rating, and the consumables it uses. Now, this may get a little bit confusing, but follow along, we got you. Now, we've got lots of different torches to look at, tons of different options and accessories and all kinds of stuff. But to make this really simple, let's say forget about all that and just focus on the main families here. Now, we're going to exclude things like specialty torches and stuff like that. So, starting at the top, we have a number 24, 9, 17, 26, 20, and 18. 
These are your major torches or your major families. Now let's take the handles off and take a look at what each one of them is. Now number 24 is an air or gas cooled torch capable of about 80 amps. It's one of the smallest in size, great for getting into small places. Directly below that is a number 9 which is a very common torch which is also gas cooled and capable of about 125 amps. Directly below that is a very common torch, which is a number 17 family. It's capable of about 150 amps and it is also gas cooled. Directly below that is a number 26 torch. This is a very large torch. You see it often used in, uh, for doing things right around 200 amps or more, or at least that's the capability of it being only a gas cooled torch. Now below that we'll move into the water cooled family or the family that is cooled. Now the 20 which is the same size as the 9 is now capable of 250 amps due to the fact that it's water cooled. It's very small, very lightweight, very compact, but very capable at 250 amps only when it's water cooled. Directly below that is a number 18 torch. The 18 is a combination of the 17 and the 26 family. Of course, we'll get a little bit further into those in a minute, but it is also a water-cooled torch capable of 350 amps. Now, some people often ask if you can interchange a torch, or you can take one family off and stick another family on. Well, look carefully at each one of the threads. The number 24 is a male-threaded torch end, so that means that you have to have a female line in order to screw it on but the 9 and the 17 both use the same size thread, so you can actually remove the number 9 and exchange it with a 17. But those are the only two that you can actually swap out, because if you look over at the 26, that has a much larger female thread because it has to carry more amperage. Now, out of all of those gas cool torches, the only ones that you can switch out of there are the 17 and the 9. Everything else has to have a separate line or a line that matches that thread. If you look at our number 20, it has a very small male thread, whereas our number 18 torch has a very large female thread. So the best rule that you can follow here is if it has a similar thread or the same thread, you can swap it out. If it does not, you have to change the entire line with it. Now, generally speaking, the torch type, the torch family, and the amperage rating associated with each family and type is the most difficult thing to figure out. It's kind of like a foreign language, but once you figure it out, you're pretty much set. And we've gotten this far, but we're still not out of the pond yet. We still have the variants. You notice that we have only a few different types and families, but we have all of these additional options, things that you can put onto it. Now, a variant is an option, and they're typically known as just only a few of them, or a couple mix and match of each one of them. The first one is our rigid torch. Rigid meaning it's stationary. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't flex. It doesn't move. It doesn't have a valve. It has no attachments on it. It's only a single line in or three lines if you have a water-cooled setup, and they are available in every single family. It's basically your standard or basic bottom-of-the-line simple torch, as easy as it gets. Next one, we have our flex head. The flex head is exactly what it does in its name. It flexes, it moves, it shifts, it contorts, it changes, it shape shifts, it does everything. You can even turn it into a question mark. There's a couple of famous welders that actually do just that. The benefits of the flex head are being able to move it into positions where you can get into something like a corner or maybe doing some edge welds or you know on the inside corners or anything like that or just being able to see what you're doing from your point of view with nothing in the way. It kind of allows you to relax your hand just a little bit more uh, while moving the torch into a different spot. Very handy to have around there, but we'll get a little bit further into flex heads in a minute. The other one is a valve. Now we have two types of uh, torches with valves on them. It's rigid valves and flex valves. Now the valve is for turning the gas on and off manually. Now if you have a machine that doesn't have an internal solenoid for your gas control, that's what the valve is for. And we'll get into that a little bit later too. But again, we have these in rigid mount and we have these in flex mounts. You can actually flex a valve head. Now different variables and variants of each one of them. That's important to note on this one. But how do you identify which one is which? Because you obviously don't want to go ahead and grab a hold of a rigid tool and, and, and break it off of there. So how do you figure out which one is which? First grab a hold of a TIG torch and have a look at the side of it right up on the neck. This is usually where you find the part number or all of the information about the torch. In this case we can see it says CK9RG. Now CK is a prefix before the number which usually is by the manufacturer or what they put on there to identify that it's their torch. CK means it's a CK worldwide torch. Now the number is usually the family identifier. In this case it's a number 9. So it's a CK worldwide torch with a number 9 family. 
Now with CK Worldwide, they usually put the actual type of torch on the side of it, which is kind of cool and illuminates the guessing game. So in this case, you see RG, which stands for rigid. Now this is a CK Worldwide number nine family torch, rigid, meaning it doesn't flex, doesn't have anything else attached to it, no other options, it's just a straight up rigid baseline torch. Now, not all of them are going to have rigid next to them or an indicator that it is rigid. And of course, not all of them are going to have anything before the number or any kind of uh, manufacturer prefix. In this case, you see it says CK9RG, but sometimes you'll just see nine. Sometimes you'll see absolutely nothing at all. On some cheap torches, it won't even have the number on the other end. But let's look at another one. Now on this torch, you can see it says CK17FX. Once again, this is a CK Worldwide torch, number 17 family, FX stands for flex. That means that it can do this. Now, not every torch is going to have FX next to it, or a lot of them are gonna display it differently. Some of them will just basically say 17F, or some of them will have a F on it, and then again, of course, the cheaper ones will have nothing. So, once again, this is a CK Worldwide torch, 17 family, FX meaning it's flexible, or it's a flex head. Let's take a look at another one. CK26VRG. Now following the same structure here, this is a CK Worldwide 26 Torch. V stands for valve, RG meaning it's rigid or not flexible. Now if this was a flex head, you would see CK26VFX, meaning that it is flexible. Now sometimes you'll see it just says 26V or you know just has a V on it, or sometimes you'll see it says 26, but it doesn't have anything on it, but you can still see that there's a valve. There's a lot of different ways that this is actually written out here, but basically speaking, 26V, 26FV or VF, either way you slice it, you pretty much know how to break them all down by now. So let's see who knows their stuff and who's been paying attention. If you know this part number and all about this torch, go ahead and comment down below. The most important thing to note on this one is if you do not see the letter for the designation of the option, you might want to actually be very careful with it. I've seen this happen a dozen times over. But the most obvious ones, if you don't see a V, but you see a knob on the top of it, it's equipped with a valve, so you don't always see the V. But the most important thing is the F. If you have a rigid torch and it doesn't have an F on the end of it, don't try to F it, because it's going to go from F to B, which means broken, and you're the one who's F'd on it. So if it doesn't say F, don't try to F it. Now there's a couple of things I want to touch on before we wrap it up with torches. I answer some of your questions and we move on to consumables. One of those things is the specialty torches or specific torches that pretty much accomplish specific tasks or one that I really love to use, especially in the fabrication world. One of those is the CK Worldwide Flex Lock. The flex lock basically means that this head will swivel 360 degrees in any direction, lock itself in place, and be used as any old regular TIG torch would. The beauty of this is that you can position it in virtually any way, direction, position, etc. Lock it in place and then, you know, weld. It is a little awkward to get used to at first, okay? At the end of the day, it is technically the exact same as any other torch when you line it up straight or if you line it up at an angle or if you do whatever it is that you do in any position that you stick it in, it's literally the exact same as pretty much any other torch. The only problem is it is visually uh, awkward. <laughs> and when you put it, put it into your hand, it actually kind of slumps and moves a little bit. This takes a little getting used to. But for things like roll cages and uh, tight joints and areas where I can't necessarily uh, reach into it with a regular uh, head or even a swivel head or anything like that. There are so many different options and so many different ways I can manipulate and move this torch to achieve that weld. So this is definitely one that you wanna have in your arsenal if you do. This one uses all of the 17 style consumables. We'll get into all of that. The other one I use a lot is a pencil style torch or a straight torch. Now these are great for getting into areas like merge collectors inside of headers, tight spaces where you can't necessarily see everything and have the space to move when you have something like a flex head. So if you put these side by side, you actually see that this one takes up a little bit less space than this one does. So the pencil style torch is a great one to have. And since most of what I weld with the pencil style torch is lower amperage or less than 130 amps, I get the one with the number nine series consumables into it, or at least it's a number nine size pencil torch. Now they make these in different series, different families and all the rest of that good stuff. But generally speaking for the flex lock, I like the number 17 style because it's higher amperage. And for the pencil style, I like the number nine style because it's lower amperage. The number 24 is also a good one to have for really tight spaces if you choose to use one of those, but it's not very common that I encounter a situation where I need the 24. I usually just use number 9. 
So now that we have a pretty good understanding of torches, like what their size is, how to identify them, what they do, how they do it, what their amperage rating is, and so on, we can move on to things like consumables. I mean, after all, what good is a torch if you have nothing attached to it? If you can't even make a weld, if you don't even have the tungsten, and the collets, and the back caps, and the cups, and all the rest of that good stuff. Now, most of this is actually for a totally different episode because we can get downright dirty and detailed on all of these consumables, right? But, much like the torches themselves, all of the consumables that you use have a few different variants in them, and they also fit their families. We have some that fit the 9 and 20 family, we have some that fit the 17, 18, 26 family, and we even have some that cross them over. Let's get on to that one. Now, just like all the variants and variables and differences in the torches themselves, we have quite a few to actually go over when it comes to the consumables. So, you might want to grab a hold of something to take some notes on and write this stuff down. Now, notice here we only have two torches that are completely assembled. That's because these consumables cross over to different families, or they work with different families. So, on the left, our assembled torch is the 9 and 20 series. So, all these consumables fit all of the torches between the number 9 and the 20 family. On the right, we have our 17, 18, 26 consumables. That means that all the consumables fit the 17 torch, the 18 torch, and the 26 torch. They're all exactly the same. Now, down below on the immediate left, we have what we call the crossover, more famously known as the stubby lens that fits the 17, 18, 26 style torches and crosses them over with some number 9 components with a few specific parts. But before actually assembling all these and showing you the proper order in which they go in, this layout here is pretty much it. And I will say that I usually don't use any kind of gas lens other than the stubby kit for the 17, 18, 26 styles because they're kind of outdated. Once you have the stubby kit on there, it's really hard to use any standard consumables. However, for the 920 family, I do have the gas lens and as well as the standard. You can see both of them as I put them together. So again, to make this really easy, let's just throw them all together here. Start by grabbing the torch itself and the collet body. Screw the collet body into the front end of the torch next to the insulator. Drop the collet inside of it. The collet holds the tungsten. Choose the back cap, small, medium, and large. You can throw either one of them on the back of it. Feed the tungsten in, but leave enough to stick out, so that way you can get your cup on there. And as soon as you snug down the back cap after setting your, your tungsten height, you're good to go. Same rule applies with the larger torches or the number 17, it's just the consumables are a little bit larger. So start with the collet body, drop the collet down in the middle of it, throw a back cap on it of your choice, stick your tungsten inside of it, leave enough to stick out, install your cup. Pretty simple. After you set your stick up, you're good to go. Now when it comes to switching out the standard lens for the gas lens, you can simply remove the cup, remove the collet body after removing the tungsten, remove the collet, and the only thing we're switching out here is the collet body and the cup itself. So the same collet goes back inside of it, the same tungsten goes back inside of it, a different collet body is attached to the top of it, as well as a different cup. This is a cup for a gas lens, much larger. Now on a number 17 stubby, first remove the insulator. A little screwdriver will pry up on the inside of it, we'll pop it right off. We'll put on the flat insulator that adapts a different cup to it. Install the 17 stubby kit as well as the 17 stubby collet. And in this case, I'm just going to throw a shorty back cap on the, uh, on the end of there just to kind of show you the difference between the two of them. Then we're going to install our tungsten just the same as we did with any other one, leave enough to stick out. I'm going to take a number 9 cup and install it on the 17 stubby kit, which uses the nine cups. When you put one side by side, you take a 17 stubby and a 17 regular, that is a major difference. It's a lot easier to manipulate, a lot easier to work. Compared to the number nine, it's pretty much the same size, if not only slightly smaller. So it's definitely something you want to have on your torch. So you see, it's actually pretty simple. Once you get the lingo down, you understand a little bit of the nomenclature, you can pretty much figure out all the TIG torches and figure out which ones you have, which ones you need, and which ones you pretty much want to have to go through all of that. But I do have a couple of questions that I'd like to address before we get out of here. They were submitted by pretty much all the viewers, very common ones that I've had over the years and all the rest of that good stuff. Let's knock some of those out before we get out of here. Now this first question is actually rather surprising how often I receive it, but it's actually, is it better to learn on a flex head or a rigid head? Well, let's just face it, it's a lot nicer and it's a luxury to have this flex head, but if you're first learning how to do it, it is great to be comfortable and it's great to have that ability to do that, 
but I do not believe in doing that. I actually believe in starting with a rigid torch. Now this is a little bit cumbersome and it's difficult to learn how to run it into a tight joint like this, but if you don't first learn how to manipulate a rigid torch and adjust it and change your grip so that you are comfortable without that flex head, you'll be better off in the long run. So I usually suggest starting out with a rigid torch before grabbing a hold of the flex torch. And it's just because it, it teaches you how to work around it or change your grip up when you need it. Next, the most popular question is, which torches do I use? Well, here they are, 17 flex, number nine flex, and number 18 flex lock. These are the most popular torches, or the ones that I use the most in that order. And then right after that comes, which cups do you use? Well, number five regular for aluminum if I want almost no etching line. Sometimes I'll use a gas lens. Number eight for just about everything. Number 12 for stainless steel, really great cup by Furic, and also by Furic number 16 BBW for titanium. Those are what I use. For tungsten, just about always, it's 332 or 2.4 millimeter, either purple or pink, and every great once in a while, and I mean very rarely, I have to do something super thin, which I'll grab a hold of some 1 16th. And finally on the list of very, very popular questions is which TIG torch fits my machine? Well, let's break down a full assembly here, which you can also usually buy these per machine. But on one end, you have commonly a DINS 3550 connector. You have a line that adapts to the machine. And then on the business end where the torch is, you have whatever torch you're using. Simply pull the handle off and look what's attached to it or how it is attached. Nine times out of 10, you can always just change the torch out of it. But if you have to change the whole line, you can either change out the line at the DINS connector or find something that fits your machine specifically. So that just about wraps it up for everything about TIG torches. Now, if you got any additional questions, you can definitely toss them down in the comments box below. You can always hit us up on the fabricationseries.com website, Instagram at the.fabricator, Facebook.com slash the Fabricator Series, and just about any one of our other social media outlets that you check the description down there to uh, get in contact with us. Now, once again, thank you so much to CK Worldwide for helping uh, put this episode together. Make sure you check all the description below and everything else like that for the products that we recommend from CK Worldwide. It's not just TIG Torches, there's more. So that's going to wrap it up. We'll see you guys on the next episode.